Hello, and welcome to Inside NRPS, the cable show that provides an in-depth look at topics related to the North Reading Public Schools. My name is Kathleen Willis, Superintendent of Schools, and I will be your host for this show. The focus of this show is the incredible North Reading Middle School High School Building Project. And joining me is the school committee representative to the Secondary School Building Project, Mr. Jerry Venezia. Welcome, Jerry. Glad you could Thank be here you, today. Thank you, Kathy. That was really professional. I'm <laughs> impressed. You've done this before. <laughs> Let's get started yeah. with our show for today. Um, and it's always interesting for the listeners to hear a little bit about the guests. So before we get started with the building project, could you tell us how you came to be involved with the building project and maybe a little bit about your work as a school committee member? Sure. You know, I've lived in town for 28 years. I've had three kids go through the school system. And I've been a member of the school committee for almost 15 years now. So uh, back probably five years ago, I got appointed as a school committee representative uh, to the secondary school building committee, which was already in existence. And they had done a lot of work dating all the way back to, I think, 2005 when, when Dr. Troughton, uh, I think, first pulled this thing together, mm -hmm. the former superintendent. Um, so I became a school committee rep, like I said, probably, I don't know, I think it's about four years ago. I was on when you started, yes. so it's at least four years, maybe four five. Years. Mm -hmm. um, so that, that's how I got involved. And um, it's been a process um, since then of trying to uh, come to an agreement on a design for the mm -hmm. middle school, high school project, and also obviously to get the funding um, you know, approved. Mm. So at this point, could you provi provide a perspective about when and how the idea for a middle school, high school building project with a shared core facility came about for North Reading? Uh, it, it first came up, I think, probably is maybe seven or eight years ago. Mm -hmm. We started looking at different options as a school committee and as a secondary school building committee. Uh, Dr. Troughton had a, uh, one of the options he proposed was this shared core facility, middle school, high school. And I have to say my first reaction was it's too ambitious, it's going to be too expensive, uh, the site's too difficult. I didn't think we would be able to, to pull it off. But he stayed behind that idea as did Chuck Carucci, the chairman of the secondary school building committee, and a number of the members of the committee as well. And so we continued to explore the options. And one option was to build a new high school and, and perhaps move the old middle school into the old high school. Uh, one was to just do a middle school. Another was to try to do both. And I think that uh, certainly in the long run, Dr. Troughton was right because um, we needed to deal with both. Mm -hmm. I, I'm, I'm convinced now that once this project's complete and we have a brand new high school and a fully renovated top to bottom middle school, um, that our secondary school building problems are going to be over for the next 40 years. So mm -hmm. um, it, it was, uh, again, conceptually, I, I think our architect, Doran Whittier, uh, who were involved with us almost on a volunteer basis, so going back seven or eight years, they also uh, made us believe us in this project that it could be done. Mm -hmm. Because initially, like I said, the site's a difficult site. It's an ambitious project. It's, a, it's an expensive project. But I think it's really, really worthwhile. Mm -hmm. You've already mentioned some of the people that have been involved in the project, our, our chairman, uh, Mr. Chuck Carucci, and, and Dr. Troughton, um, prior to my coming on board. I know you had mentioned to me previously, you just wanted to thank the people. I, that I do. Been... I mean, we have a tremendous building committee. You know, when I first got involved with it, people said, don't make it too big, or it is too big, because I think we have 21 voting members now, mm -hmm. made up of, um, you know, high school, I'm, I'm sorry, uh, school administrators, elected officials from the Board of Selectmen, the Finance Committee, the School Committee, and also from a number of uh, citizens who had volunteered. And some of them have been on this committee going all the way back to 2005. So mm -hmm. they spent the last nine years of their life uh, dedicating themselves to getting this project uh, finished. But uh, Chuck Carucci has been unbelievable. Chuck has been uh, the chairman of this committee since day one. Mm -hmm. uh, he's never wavered in his commitment to this project. He has uh, put his heart and soul into it. And, and the man is unbelievable because he has, he has a, enough knowledge about the building trades to you know, be able to keep an mm -hmm. eye on things. Mm -hmm. um, Larry Witts, the vice chair, and a lot of the other members of the committee have been on for eight or nine years. Um, the school administrators that are involved. I mean, you picked up the ball the second you got here mm -hmm. and you put in a ton of time on this thing. And, uh, you know, you had a full enough plate taking over a superintendent from Dr. Troughton and then you had to deal with this as well. But I think yourself, uh, Patrick Daly, Kathy O'Connell, the, the principal at the middle mm -hmm. school, John Bernard, the principal mm -hmm. at the high school, um, Wayne Hardacre, our director of buildings and grounds. I mean, it's unbelievable the amount of time and effort 
uh, that all of you have put into this mm -hmm. project. And then we have uh, people like our, our community activists, like Jeff Simons and Marcy Bailey, who were so instrumental in getting us uh, support for the funding of this project, which was no easy task. Mm -hmm. So a lot of people put in a lot of time and a lot of effort. And again, I want to go back and, and credit Dr. Troughton because mm -hmm. he's the one that kind of kicked this thing off. And mm -hmm. uh, it's taken a long time, but I think it's exciting. We are where we are right now. Sure. We also um, have members of the Board of Selectmen oh, and yeah, the I'd, Finance Committee. Actually, the entire Board of Selectmen. Mm -hmm. we, we could not have gotten this project complete uh, to where it is right now mm -hmm. without the support of the entire uh, Board of Selectmen. Um, uh, Sean Delaney is the Board of Selectmen's representative yes. to the Building Committee. Sean has worked tirelessly on this project, and I really regret seeing him not running for re-election because we're going to miss him. We're going to miss him a lot, and hopefully we can get him uh, appointed to the building committee. I'm sure we can as a, as a citizen representative after he leaves office in the first week of May. Uh, Bob Masseri, uh, Mike Prisco, uh, Joe Foti, and uh, Steve O'Leary, they've mm -hmm. all been very supportive. Mm -hmm. The finance committee's been tremendously supportive. Don Kelleher is the representative from the finance committee. Don is the numbers guy, and, and, and thank God we have him because he was able to make sense of all the numbers, which um, were fairly complicated in this project. Great segue to my next question. Yeah. There are many numbers swirling around this project. Could you provide a little context to some of those numbers yeah. for the listeners? The project's expensive. Um, we knew it was going to be expensive. We weren't sure how expensive. Initially, uh, when we asked for funding for this project, we were working off the Mass School Building Authority's um, uh, formula for getting a project off the ground. And essentially what they do is they give you some money to do a feasibility study. Mm -hmm. And that feasibility study gets you to a certain point in the design process and generally gets you to about 20% design construction documents. And at that point, um, you need to make a decision about whether you're, not, you're going to go forward with this project. And if you are, you need to find out how much money it's going to take to actually complete the project. Mm -hmm. So initially, I think as most people know, uh, we had set the project cost at about $107 million. And um, we got approval from the town, overwhelming approval from the town, which we are so grateful for because the, the, the communities really supported this project. But after we began to develop the design documents beyond 20% and we got 100% construction documents and we brought our contractor, uh, Gil Bain, who, by the way, has been fantastic in this project, uh, brought them on board. Uh, the cost of the project escalated to about $123 million. Mm -hmm. And we went back to town meeting a year ago, a year ago, the uh, March, and uh, the town approved the additional $15.5 million. And again, it, it's, I'm, it, I'm grateful that they did it, and uh, I don't think we're going to disappoint them. I want, I want to remind people that of that amount, $49 million of that, or up to $49 million, is going to be paid by the Mass School Building Authority. Mm -hmm. So... It, clearly, it's an expensive project no matter how you cut it, but without that $49, $49 million contribution from the MSBA, uh, there is no way, no way that we would ever have been able to afford this project. It's true. So you and I have participated in the design process, and we regularly tour the construction site to see how the project is taking shape. I think our viewers would like to hear a little bit about some of the design features that are associated with all of those wonderful spaces that are included in the project. When you see the design, for a lot of us, for myself in particular, it's hard to envision what something's going to look like. So mm -hmm. you see blueprints, you see drawings, you see renderings, and it's still hard to envision how the project is going to be set on the site, uh, how it's going to be connected. And I think our architects, and I think they've gotten some criticism because of the initial uh, miscalculation on the, on the cost of the project, but they've done a fantastic mm -hmm. job of designing a very... Uh, taking a very difficult site and being able to design a brand new high school, uh, essentially a brand new middle school, and then connecting them together. And I think that um, the, uh, so the, the athletic facilities are going to be second to none. I mean, we're going to have a gymnasium <laughs> that's going to have a um, competition basketball court. Uh, the plan is we'll be able to divide the gymnasium in half so that we'll have a middle school side, a, a high school side. But we'll also be able to play two basketball games and have two practices at one time. So we're going to be able to fully utilize the gymnasium space. Uh, in addition to that, we're going to have 14 motorized baskets in there so that we can actually set up into four different courts uh, for, for the younger kids when they play. <coughs> we also have a uh, 3,000 square foot uh, auxiliary gymnasium, which is going to have a hardwood floor and it can be used for, and help me out Kathy, but cheerleading, gymnastics, yoga, dance, um, That's correct. 
wellness, any wellness programs? Wellness programs. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's going to be an auxiliary space that we don't have to tie up the gym mm -hmm. to have these type of acti activities. We can have them going on simultaneously with basketball mm -hmm. or volleyball or whatever else is going on in the gym. In addition to that, we've got approximately 2,000 to 3,000 square feet of space, depending on how we utilize it, uh, for a fitness center, mm -hmm. which is something we have not had at North Reading High School. Uh, we've been sorely lacking in that, and we're going to be able to put in fitness equipment, treadmills, free weights, uh, so that the uh, the athletes and, and everybody in the school mm -hmm. can take advantage of that space. So we're really, really excited about that. We have locker rooms, middle school boys locker room, girls locker room, high school boys, high school mm -hmm. girls locker rooms, uh, athletic director's office. Um, so that's one of the spaces I'm really excited about. You know, another is the concept of Main Street. And yes. I think you hear about this with a lot of the new schools that are being mm -hmm. built. But Main Street is nothing short of spectacular. Mm -hmm. It's like 50 foot, I don't know, 50 foot high ceilings. And it runs all the way from high school academic building all the way the length of the middle school down to the very back of the middle school. And off of the Main Street, you're going to have the athletic center. You're going to have your cafeteria and your kitchen. You're going to have your media center, mm -hmm. your fine arts uh, center. Mm -hmm. um, what am I missing? Um, auditorium. To the kitchen. Kitchen. Cafeteria. Yeah, cafeteria. I mean, so everything is, everything is off of Main Street. Mm -hmm. And that Main Street, you know, is, is again, it's going to be an open space. And I'm sure uh, Kathy and, and John Bernard and, and Kathy O'Connell um, probably going to be able to use that space for different things. I mean, uh, the community is going to be able to use That's the beauty of this building. Mm -hmm. It's not only a school facility, it's a community facility. Mm. Um, the Fine Arts Center or the Performing Arts Center, mm -hmm. unbelievable. I mean, I think when, when our, our uh, kids get in there, they're going to be astounded by what they see. Uh, it's going to have a seating capacity of 650, so I'm told. Um, it will. <laughs> and, uh, and stationary it, seats. Stationary <laughs> seats. Uh, it's going to have... Um, uh, state-of-the-art sound equipment, state-of-the-art lighting. We have a catwalk that goes across the top mm -hmm. of the uh, auditorium that, um, it, that we're going to be able to operate the lights from, uh, the, like I said, the sound production. We have a TV studio downstairs. Mm -hmm. we, have a music, we have music rooms for the uh, middle school and for the high school. We have a set room, which is right off of the stage, so the sets can be built and then carried right across the hall mm -hmm. onto the stage. We have a costume design room. Um, it, it's it's going to be spectacular. I think it's one of the areas that people are just going to, you know, their jaws are going to drop when they see it. Mm. Um, the media center. Oh, okay. As soon as you walk in the new entrance uh, for the high school, on your left will be the administrative offices for the principal and guidance. But on the right, you're going to see a glass wall, and it's, it's the media center. And I think it's one of the spaces we underestimated. It's really, really, it's a large space. It's a beautiful space. Uh, it's essentially going to be the library for both the middle school and the high school. Mm. Um, and it includes two classrooms for instruction at the back, yeah. as well as small study carrels or cubicles, I cubicles. should say, yeah. similar to what you would find in a college. Yep, yep. Um, the distance learning mm. uh, lab My is, favorite room. is if, if people have driven by, and I know they have uh, on Route 62, mm -hmm. and they've looked up and seen that glass centerpiece of the, of the building sitting on the hill, that's the distance learning lab. Mm -hmm. And the second and third floors are a college type lecture hall setting on two levels and it's going to be stadium seating so that whoever's lecturing or if there's a meeting school committee meeting you're going to have um, uh, again uh, stadium seating at that level and then up above you're going to have stadium seating uh, around the top level as well and then you've got all that glass in the background it's just going to be a beautiful space it is um, going to be amazing the, the kitchen is 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 unique because uh, again it falls right into that shared cool facility concept and that the kitchen will service both the high mm -hmm. school and the middle school cafeteria, which will be totally separate. Uh, the kitchen will be in the middle and the two cafeterias mm -hmm. will be on either side. Mm -hmm. So it's um, it, it's just, it's so exciting to see it develop. We're at a stage now where we watched the cement go in and, the, mm -hmm. and a lot of dirt being moved around and then we saw steel being erected. But now we're actually in there and you can see the building and the way it's shaping up. and. Uh, and all the finishes are starting to go in now, so it's it's really really exciting. So as we talk about uh, some of the next stages and phases in the project, what are some important timeline milestones that we'll be achieving over the next year to two years? Yeah. 
The school committee, along with the administration, decided that we would start school September 8th uh, this mm -hmm. year, which gives us a few extra days to get ready. But we expect the school to be ready for delivery to us, the owners, uh, I think mid-August, mid -August. August 17th, August 18th. It mm -hmm. uh, gives us a little bit of time to get everybody settled and moved in. But the, the, there's a really tight timeline. Uh, we need to be ready to have the high school open in September because in June, when the kids get out of school at the middle school, we have to be able to get them moved down to the old high school in September when school opens because we need to get into the middle school. So the day they get out of the middle school, the day in June that they uh, get out of school for the summer, uh, the contractor is going to be in there tearing apart the middle school. Mm -hmm. So that makes the deadline for the following September extremely important because in September of 2015, uh, we'll be ready to move the uh, kids that are in the old high school, the middle school kids, back up to the brand new renovated middle school. We'll have the new high school obviously will be open for a year and at that point in time we'll be ready to um, uh, take down the old high school, uh, mm -hmm. do the demolition of the old high school. And then when the old high school is demolished, we're going to put in the uh, practice fields, the softball field, the parking lots, do the final landscaping. Mm -hmm. So this project will be done in November of 2015. But uh, the phasing is really important. In September of this year, which is how many months away? Less than six months away. Right. We have to be ready uh, to move the, uh, the high school kids into the new high school. Mm -hmm. And we are on time. We are on time. Uh, no matter what you hear, uh, what people say, we are on time. And I'm telling you right now, we will be in that school the first week of September. Mm -hmm. There's no I doubt agree. in my mind. So as we think about why we're going through this project, and it has been a labor of love, a very long, for some of you, you. labor of love, <laughs> um, let's talk about what this new building project means for those individuals that will be occupying it, uh, students and faculty, but most importantly, our students. Well, I mean, I think our students have done exceptionally well academically. Mm -hmm. I think we've been one of the top 50 high schools in, mm -hmm. in uh, Massachusetts over the last several years. I think our SAT scores have have come up to a point where we're really, really competitive with some of the better school districts. Uh, they've done fantastic, and there's a reason for that, because I think we have the best faculty, the best staff, the best administrators, and they've done a fantastic mm -hmm. job working out of two fairly antiquated buildings. Um, so I think that the new buildings are going to supplement what we already have going on. Mm -hmm. uh, they're going to afford us the opportunity to have these state-of-the-art facilities. One thing I didn't mention is talking about the, the uh, academic building for the high school is the new labs. I mean, oh, we have six lab. beautiful brand new labs that yes. are double the size of the existing labs. We also have, uh, we'll have new labs in the middle school as well. Mm -hmm. So the kids are going to be afforded an opportunity to work out of facilities that are going to you know, like I said, supplement the great work that our administrators uh, and our faculty and our staff have done over all these years. And, mm -hmm. um, but Kathy, again, you probably have some better thoughts on that. Well, I, I've been thinking about what this state-of-the-art facility means for our students. And it means that they're going to fully participate in learning experiences that prepare them for college and career. So when I was thinking about some of the words or themes that I would use to describe what this building will mean for our students, but also for educators, words like collaboration, engagement, critical thinking, connectedness, citizenship, globalization, creativity and innovation and interdisciplinary approaches came to mind. All of the spaces that are included in this new structure promote those kinds of themes that allow our students to engage in high levels of learning. Every single space is flexible. And what I mean by that is that every classroom can be considered to be a computer lab. The wireless infrastructure that is That's, included in this facility. Yeah, the technology aspect of this. And you should talk more amazing. about that because I'm, I'm not very good with it. But I think it's what's going to separate us, too, from where we are now and where we can be. Yeah. Well, we truly are um, taking technology integration into that next level. And students will have access to multiple devices to allow them to use the tools that they need to uh, engage in learning experiences that learning experiences that prepare them for jobs that don't even exist yet, as, as Mel and I talk about often. So uh, again, these spaces and the furniture that occupy these state spaces will allow our students to collaborate in real world problem solving in classes that are already structured to be high level. 
but now the teachers and the students will have the tools that they need to achieve that next level of excellence. And that's what this building will afford them. As you've already mentioned, our students perform well, and that's because we have mm -hmm. very talented educators working with them. But now our students and our educators will have the tools that they need. Um, not just the tools in, in terms of materials and supplies, but the kinds of learning structures that are promote a collaborative atmosphere. And so we're very excited about that. And the Distance Learning Lab will just allow us to connect with children, students from the next town, the next state, the next country around the world. Yeah. So having all of those different kinds of spaces that you already spoke of allows for a variety of learning communities to form. We think about the visual and performing arts. We think about athletics. We think about uh, different kinds of um, uh, achievement activities, uh, academic achievement activities, will all be supported by those spaces um, that you've already described. So I truly believe there's a little bit of something for everyone in this new I facility. Agree. I agree. And uh, I don't think anyone's dreams or hopes will go unanswered. And I, I can't emphasize enough how much Kathy and John Bernard, uh, principal of the high school, and Kathy O'Connell, and Patrick Daly and have Patrick. put into that this aspect of it. Because the things that Kathy just said, I could have sat here for an hour and I wouldn't have got most of those. <laughs> but I mean, the collaborative space, you know, just as a sample of that, um, each of the floors in the new high school academic mm -hmm. building have two breakout collaborative spaces for students uh, that they can, uh, you know, go out there and sit in a group and, and mm -hmm. work on projects together. And it's right out there in the hallway, separated by a, what, a three-quarter high wall. That, right, a knee wall, but yeah. it is a little higher than yeah. the knee. But again, these spaces that might have been um, just allocated to hallways are now spaces that will be used for learning in different ways. We don't necessarily sit in desks and rows anymore. And interesting enough, I mean, the MSBA, essentially, when they're making a contribution to a project like this, and they are contributing $49 million, they set up a lot of parameters for us. So there's certain things we could do and certain things we couldn't do. And one of the concerns I had initially is, do we have enough space? Because right. our enrollment at the high school is going up. You know, instead of 740, it mm -hmm. could be close to 800. But I assure everybody, we have plenty of space. I we mean, do. the space that we have, the architect uh, and the contractor have done a fabulous job of utilizing every square inch of space in that building mm -hmm. um, for storage and for obviously for learning spaces um, you know we have a TV studio uh, the there. TV studio is very um, exciting it's just the, the, the space is, is phenomenal I think uh, I think the, the public is going to be satisfied uh, that they're getting their money's worth out of this I think one of the things that all of us in the building committee want uh, when we're through at the end of the day is to have value and I think we're going to get the best value we possibly can for our money. And as we get closer to the end of the summer, we will provide an opportunity for community members to come in and take a look at what they have committed a considerable amount of research, it's their resources building. toward uh, to make this happen. It's their building. So. They're paying for it. I agree. Kathy, one thing I forgot and okay. I left out is when we were talking about the people that have been behind this mm -hmm. project. Um, early on, back, I think it was 2009, Dr. Troughton, uh, Chuck Carucci, the chairman of the, uh, of the school building committee, um, myself, and um, Senator Tarr and Representative Brad Jones, oh, our yes. state rep and our, and our state senator, went in and met with Catherine Craven, who at the time was the chairperson mm -hmm. or the director of the Mass School Building Authority. And at that meeting, uh, Senator Tarr and, and, and Representative Jones were instrumental in presenting this shared core facility mm -hmm. project to uh, to Catherine Craven, and, mm -hmm. and as a result, she she bought into it. Mm -hmm. uh, and that was the momentum to get this thing going. I mean, we had thought about it for a while, but we hadn't really talked out loud about it. Mm -hmm. And um, and thanks to Senator Tyre and Representative Jones, we were able to get this thing approved, mm -hmm. uh, obviously with your good work, because there was a lot of uh, um, information that had to be provided for the approval. But it's it seems like... Um, we're getting near the finish line. <laughs> we are, we are. And I have to say, it's one of the best examples that I can think of, of a community truly coming together to make something happen. Yeah. It wasn't always an easy path, but um, w at the end of the day, we are what we wanted to be. And that's... Yeah. It's a big are. project for us. It really is. I mean, mm -hmm. it's just, uh, I'm not going to say it's overwhelming, but it's its huge. I mean, mm -hmm. I don't think there's anything that we've ever done in town um, that would compare to it. I was on the Batchelder Building Committee mm -hmm. uh, for five or six years. And uh, that was challenging, but it's nothing compared to this. It's been so. huge, but worthwhile. Yeah, very and worthwhile. So I thank you, 
Mr. Venezia, for joining me today and providing um, this wonderful insight into the secondary school building project. Um, next time, I will be joined by Michael Connolly, the Director of Finance and Operation, to talk a little bit about the development process for the FY15 school district budget. So until then, I leave you with a, a quote by Eleanor Roosevelt, former United States First Lady, who stated, the future belongs to those who believe in the beauty of their dreams. Thank you and good night.